All right, let's try a slightly more complicated example of the tree view. Um, first of all, let's look at some data. Um, the data I've got here is, um, let's see what I call it, a mesh.txt. Um, and what it is, is it's the uh, medical subject headings from the National Library of Medicine. Uh, they're called the mesh headings. Um, this is from 2003, and I'm required to tell you that this is out of date, and you should not use it for clinical work or clinical diagnosis as if you were going to. Anyway, uh, what the mesh headings are, they're, they're used for coding uh, and categorizing information in medicine. And what you see on here is there is, first of all, a, a, a section of text, like body regions, followed by a semicolon, followed by a code. Now, it's hierarchical, because the next line is abdomen. Abdomen is a body region, and its code is 047. So A01 is on the top, O47s underneath it. Then we have abdominal cavity. It is A01.047.025. The dots separate the levels. And we go down deeper and deeper, and then we go back up. Uh, the groin is uh, part of um, 047. 047 was what? Oh, abdomen. Um, so, yeah, you see that's it. it's an extension of abdomen. Um, it's um, 0.365 and so forth and so on. And they are, um, I only did a few of them here. It's actually several thousand lines long, um, but I, I did enough for an example. So that's that's my file, and it's mesh, um, um, whoops, uh, it's mesh.txt in the, in the file that will be online. So, um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to have it come up like this in one of my um, in my, one of my uh, tree view windows, and you can see there's body regions. There's two at the at the top level. There's more going further down, but I didn't do that many. <clears throat> okay, under body regions, um, we have, uh, for example, uh, head. Under head, we have face. Under face, we have eye. Under eye, we have eyelids. And uh, that's as deep as it goes. I, th I think it's only six levels deep at this um, at this level, at this amount of data that I include. I don't know how many levels deep the mesh headings actually go. But you can see the codes are down the side here, the mesh codes. And the um, the hierarchy is there. Um, and that's, that's the kind of thing a tree view is good for, uh, for jumping through various things. So I get out of head, I could go into... Um, like thorax, um, thoracic cavity, and so forth and so on. So there's the idea. It's a much larger data set. And um, let's look at the code. Uh, the code is similar. I don't have the heading in the code here, the usual G. Uh, this is GPL'd. Um, I'll put it in before I upload it. All right. Uh, well, underneath it here, look in, let's look in the background. We'll look at the uh, Glade first of all. It's very similar to the previous one. There's the, uh, there's the store. It's, again, two columns character array. It's called tree store, same as before. There's the window, there's fixed one, there's viewport, there's, um, um, there's, uh, this is not a, this is not the viewport we had before. This is a scrolled window. I've put a view, a scrolled window here, and it's view one. And within the scrolled window, I put the viewport. So we've got a viewport within the scrolled window. That means, as you saw there when I was running it, as the thing gets, um, gets larger, uh, I have scrolling um, that I can uh, run through so I can run up and down so it, it doesn't keep getting the thing. Let's see, um, it's one of these things that gets, uh, yeah, you can see the scroll bar has appeared down the, um, and, and the scroll bar would occur across the bottom too if, if necessary. Uh, but it, in other words, it's now, it can be adjusted in the normal fashion. Um, okay. So in the background we have, um, under fixed, we have a scrolled window. In the scrolled window, we have the viewport, which we had before. Within the, which is now called view two. Uh, within the viewport, we have the um, the tree view, same as before, same name as before. There's the select. It's got again the same same name, and it's going to have the um, same signal on select changed over here. Uh, and then we have two rows, and they were created the same way as they're actually the same rows. Um, as before with the renderers and so forth. So it's basically the same example, but it's more complicated. All right, what do we got down here? Uh, I only pull in view, um, 
in view one, um, which is the scrolled window. I didn't actually pull it. I don't actually access it. Uh, view two, uh, the, uh, the the viewport. I don't do anything to it. I don't pick up any signals from it, so I don't actually have to uh, have to pull it in off of the uh, off the XML file. It's in there, but there's nothing to be done with it. And I'm not actually doing anything with the scrolled window under other than you know enabling it uh, so that it shows. Okay, everything else is the same up here. Um, and then we pull these guys in from the XML file uh, as before. Same idea. Now I've got a bunch more. And there's there's where I add the renderers to the columns. Uh, renderer 1 goes to column 1 and renderer 2 goes to column uh, 2. Or numbered 0 and 1 as they actually technically are. And then I've, now I've got six levels of iterators. I've got the main iterator and um, five child iterators. All right. Now to read that file in, because um, I'm going to read the file in and generate this um, this hierarchy, <coughs> I've got a bunch of uh, character strings. There's going to be the line that I actually read in. It's going to be the description, which is column one. There's going to be the code, which is column two. And I'm going to need some pointers. I think I only used P1. I don't think I used P2. Um, I have a level, which will indicate how how deep I am in the um, uh, in in the uh, in the hierarchy, and uh, let's see. Um, next of all is I declare f1 to be a file pointer, and I open up the file for input for reading. I open up mesh.txt for input. Um, if for some reason it doesn't open, um, I'm done. I'm I'm out of here. Okay, uh, forever. Um, read in a line maximum 1024 bytes from uh, the file pointed to by the file pointer f1 or reference by f1 into line if it comes back null it means there were no additional lines i close the file and break the while loop i exit the while loop at that point okay chop off the new line character f gets does not remove the new line character this does goes down to the length of it minus one puts a null or a zero there uh, String string, str, str, finds the first occurrence of semicolon in line. I'm looking for the semicolon. It's my divider. When I find it, p1, I should have checked to see if I got it, but I know every line has one. So anyway, uh, you always if it came back null, means it didn't find it. Um, so I drop um, at that byte. At the, the p, p1 will come back pointing to the byte that contains the semicolon. Uh, star p1 dereferences p1 and i'm dropping a zero on top of it so uh, the string now has a null or a terminator character where the semicolon was so if i copy line into desc the description copying line into description it'll copy up to the place where the semicolon was because that's now the terminator so you will get the description copied in from the line i increment the pointer p1 p1 is now pointing at the byte Beyond where the semicolon was, it's now pointing at the first byte of the code. And that's what I do, P1 being a pointer to a starting point in a string. There is a null out there, of course, at the end of the string. And I copy um, the remainder of the string into code. So now I have description and code. Okay, set level equal to zero. Because uh, I really want to know how many levels deep I am. And the number, number of levels deep is going to be um, one more than the number of... Uh, of decimal points in the code. If there's no decimal point, it means I'm at level one. Uh, if uh, if there is a if there's a decimal point, it means there's two parts to the code and I'm at level two, and so forth. So I uh, run across the um, the string, the code string, looking until I get a uh, null at the end of it, looking to find out if I have um, a decimal point. And if I do, I increment level. Starts at zero, gets incremented. When I'm finished, I increment it by one more because the actual number of levels is one greater than the number of um, decimal points. And then I uh, write it out. I just print out a diagnostic. Uh, I write out level equals, and it gives me the level I've uh, I've determined it to be. It gives me the uh, gives me the um, is gives me the oh, what is word? Um, well, I, the word I I should have said it, yeah. It should, it's description here. Um, yeah, I don't know how it got to be word. Um, anyway, um, it's the string that's going to be the description, and the code is the string that's that is the code. All right, so I've got the description, I've got the code. I'll write that out. Um, okay, if level is equal to one, it means 
We're all going to put this at the top level. Uh, nothing. Uh, there is there is no um, there is no parent. Okay, so the top level level one is is the one we start off with. And when this is the same as before, we go out and get to the tree store. We go out and get a reference in iter. We put into the uh, first column, we'll column zero. We put the description into column one. We put the code, and we're uh, we're done. So we would um, I should have put else's here, but basically we cycle in the, on the while loop. Um, if it's not if if it's if it's not level one, if it's level two, if it's level two, now I'm going to do a child, and I the I'm play, I'm going out and I'm getting a reference uh, to the next available row, but it's going to be a but I'm going to append it to the previous parent row at level one. If I've got a level two, there must have been an iter for a level one. Even if I've seen several level twos, there's still that iter of the parent level one sitting there. I can't get to a level two unless I've seen a level one. And I may see many level ones, but that iter for level one is going uh, to see many level twos, but that iter for level one is going to stay the same. Um, so iter is always going to be the address or the reference to the parent row, even if it's several rows above, but it's at it's the next higher level in the tree. And I, I get the the reference to the um, for what will be now be the child, uh, and I put the description now I put the description in for the child. This is the this is a level two. Be, uh, the description will say something or other, and there'll do be two parts to the uh, to the code. Um, so I put it in. Likewise for level three. If I'm at, if it's a level three, there must have been a level one that preceded it because that's the way the data is. The data always, you know, you don't go, to, you don't go to level three without there having been a level two. If there has been a level two, it or child one will be its reference, and that's the and that's the current parent of whatever number of level threes you have. So I uh, get a reference to um, this is actually the third level, um, and it I'm appending it un, um, underneath or linking it to uh, the uh, level two. Um, line above and doing the same thing except the the only difference is it's not in child one it's now child two and i keep doing this for level four i append onto um th this is level four reference it's called child three and i'm appending it onto the level three reference which is called child two and i do it for five and i do it for six and um that's as far as I went. I think that's as far as the data I have actually went. But I could continue on like this. There's probably some way of doing this more generally, uh, but um, this works. It's not that much of a problem. I probably should have put LSIFs in there and so forth. But um, that was an early. Uh, that that actually uh, doesn't do anything. I mean, um, Tree Store is already part of Tree View. Uh, so doing that line is uh, superfluous. I left it in there as a reminder, but it's uh, it's superfluous. It's already been done. Uh, anyway, this is where I pull out the selection. Uh, I get the I get the address or the pointer to uh, to the to the selection that, that's going to be associated with this tree view. Same as before, no difference. And down under selection ch changed, it's again um, the same code, um, same functions as I did in the previous video. Where I get the, uh, where I, I uh, based on the uh, on the the pointer, the selector that's sent in as a as a widget, um, a, a GTK tree selection. I'm casting it from what was received as a widget. Uh, I get a reference to model, and I get a reference to iter. Uh, if it's false, it means um, act, this is not a real call return. Sometimes you, for debugging, apparently they use this, but. Um, in our case, if it's uh, if it's if it comes back not false, in other words, true, uh, we do have an actual selection that's been made, and I fetch out the value uh, from the model at the iter column zero, first column, uh, the value which is actually going to be a uh, which is going to be um, a pointer. I'm passing down the address of the pointer. Uh, it fills in the pointer. So when I come back, value will be a pointer to the string uh, that contains the value from the first column, and minus one just means that's all I'm doing in this in this at this 
in this function. I could do more in this function, but I'm only doing this one thing. I could do the second thing in the first in one fun all in one function, but I did that in two. So I write out description um, and write out a string. No no new line character. Value is pointing to the string. It writes out the string. Then I do it again for the second column, column one. I get the uh, into value. I get the uh, pointer. It's pointing to the string, and I write out the mesh code and the new line character, and you get your result. Uh, so. Uh, yeah. And compile it. Uh, I don't know if I made it. I made a change there, didn't I? I'm not sure. Anyway, um, and run it. And as you can see in the background here, as I as I click through here, as I click if I click any one of these, I'll see the actual level. At that level, neck there. You see, neck, neck is one has no descendants, so there's no little triangle next to it and so forth. But um, extremities. Um, I didn't make these up. These are um, these are National Library of Medicine. Um, so if I click metatarsis, you see metatarsis, and I click uh, any one of these, you can see the thing coming up in the background, which shows me the um, shows me the uh, description and the meth and the mesh code. Uh, the only thing that was different here is when I was doing the um, I was doing the columns over here, I uh, changed the names um, of of the um, uh, of them here, it's uh, I was a right first one's a right click that was a left click. You see, there's the title. I changed from column one to column and column two to description and mesh mesh code. Remember, you right click to get into these things. Uh, but yeah, there you are, and uh, you notice you got the scroll bar going going on here, which uh, allows the thing to get um, quite large um, as you drill through it. Um, at your own risk, of course, um, by running down further and further, deeper and deeper into this hierarchy. Now, it doesn't actually have to be a hierarchy. It could be just a simple table uh, if you don't make anything a child. If everything's uh, at the same at the same top level, then it just becomes a simple table, essentially a list view. But it's a tree view. It can have children. And uh, there's a much more complicated example. Uh, again, you could make these viewports larger as necessary. And you can put other things than text in here. I haven't done it personally, but you could put checkboxes and, and the progress bars and a few other things uh, can be in here and they can be accessed because uh, then they require individual access for whether they're checked or not checked and so forth. But anyway, there is um, the somewhat um, nice to have, um, basically very simple to write, very complicated to try to figure out on your own, however. Um, tree view. Uh, 